we've got our lead commentator, a guest analyst who is uh, with me for the rest of the program, that's uh, Mahmoud Jaga, and who is going to be sharing his thoughts and perspectives on the news and issues, including those covered on this program today. And our commentator uh, is right here with me. Thank you so much, uh, Mahmoud Jaga. Of course, we've we'll been hearing all of this. Uh, politicians who are so confident, I mean, these yeah. campaign teams, I mean, you hear them so confident of, of themselves that their principles will emerge winner. I mean, let's start with Frank Schreiber of the Labour Party, I'm sorry, of the PDP earlier on. Uh, you, you could hear him saying that, look, Atiku is even thinking of winning more than 25 states. Uh, what do you make of that uh, confidence? <laughs> Frank Schreiber, <laughs> very eloquent, very <laughs> explosive. Well, you see, like you said, politics is such a difficult thing. All this running around, not sleeping, meeting endlessly, traveling everywhere. Unless you convince yourself that you are on the way to winning, <laughs> it cannot be done. And the worst thing you will do as a politician is to give your supporters the impression that you are doubting whether you will win. If you do that <laughs> by tomorrow, you wouldn't have any uh, uh, support at supporter. all. I mean. Honestly, so although the, this day projection that was uh, published uh, yesterday gave PDP an edge, but you can see that they are not even happy with that. Uh, they think that it should be even better. And as you tried to point out to him, despite all the problems that PDP is having, uh, when you have 13 governors and five of them have been in rebellion, and all efforts to reconcile have been futile, and there is even talk now that they might throw their weight uh, somewhere, and also the Peter Obi Labour Party phenomenon, uh, from what we know of Nigerian politics since 1999, it is the PDP that has been the main victim because the, the Peter Obi phenomenon is most prominent in the Southeast, which was the most solid PDP base since 1999. So without that, really, it's a very big problem. In yeah, addition including to the NMPP's uh, strongholds, exactly. too. I mean, if yeah. we were to go back to, flip back to the, uh, 2019, I mean, Absolutely. all of these guys will definitely uh, be pushing towards the PDP. But let's Ooh. talk about Atiku Abubakar here. This is mm. the same person that was rejected by his former boss, uh, uh, Olusegun Obasanjo. Mm. And Obasanjo seems to be building a consensus against Atiku Abubakar. I mean, mm. one of the papers, I mean, actually put it succinctly by stating that, look, uh, the five uh, rebellious governors actually be voting or uh, going for Basson just man uh, what sort of person do you think uh, is being sold to Nigerians uh, uh, by the PDP and what how do you think that Nigerians are receiving this same person that was rejected by his former boss it's true the, the only thing is that the dispute between uh, former president of and former president uh, vi former vice president Atiku Abakar has been on uh, for a long time, since at least 2004, soon after Obasanjo was elected for a second term. And fortunately for Atiku Avakar, not many people who were aware of all the things that happened that time will listen very much to what former President Obasanjo is saying, because basically uh, uh, Atiku Avakar's argument was that the quarrel started because he opposed the third term bid of President Obasanjo. Which and Obasanjo most Nigerians, said he never wanted. And if well, he had wanted it, uh, he would have, he would God have, would have given him. That's <laughs> what he said. But of course, we saw how the late uh, Mantu uh, committee, you know, tinkered with the constitution and recommended that time. Uh, I knew that personally because I was sacked as editor of yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that period <laughs> for because of that story. For, yeah. for, for reporting that. Yeah, that is true. So to the extent that that was at the center of their quarrel, so all these things that former President Obasanjo is saying about Atiku Abakar will just be taken with a pinch of salt. And by the way, former President Obasanjo is equally hostile to the APC candidate, mm. uh, Bola Tinubu. So can we who, conclude that Obasanjo is fully with Peter Obi now, and that may count for something you know, in the Labour Party? Well, certainly he doesn't have much of an option, because the candidates of the two major parties, he has had quarrels with them. Uh, more or less throughout this republic. So he doesn't want either Atiku or Tinubu to become a uh, president. So his only option was, uh, but uh, you know, President Obasanjo, of course, has this huge uh, image in Nigeria and in Africa, a two time head of state, and all over Africa. He's one of the best known Nigerians. But electorally, 
I doubt if he has much value. He can't even deliver <laughs> Ogun State to anybody. Okay, okay. let's uh, talk about this Labour mm. Party and their uh, projection. Based on the this day uh, projections, you'll see that uh, the party is making some uh, strong, is gaining some strength in the southeast, south south, and then the middle belt. But when it does the north central, but when it comes to the political north, it looks like uh, it's not so much anywhere to be found other than maybe some sections of the north central. To that extent, the this day uh, uh, projection, whether it was analytical as uh, people, analytics as people said, not a direct opinion poll, like mm. it has more resonance with reality than the ANAP poll, for example, which said it talked to people and, uh, and they gave. This is what people have been saying for long that a party that only has a visible presidential candidate but does not have in many states even gubernatorial or senatorial or state assembly candidate that's the structure that politicians are talking about it's very important because in a particular state you know it's not just the presidential candidate if you have a gubernatorial candidate who is running around campaigning senatorial candidates, House of Reps, state assembly candidates running around campaigning, mobilizing their family members, their wives, their children, their church <laughs> members, their mosque uh, members, extended family, everybody, it all makes for the strength. Yeah, and you so it can count for the presidential it, it, candidate. It does. It okay, uh, Mahmoud Jaga, so try to round off this conversation. Mm -hmm. If there was going to be a runoff today mm -hmm. uh, on election day, after the elections, the results coming, do you think that Labour Party will be part of those two political parties that will qualify to go for runoff? Well, the in case there is a runoff, which or even personally, NNPP, let me personally not I don't think there will be a runoff, but if there is going to be a runoff, it is most likely to be between the two major parties because it is the parties with the highest number of votes now, not the spread, that will go into the runoff. Mm -hmm. And I still think that the most likely parties will be the two big ones. And uh, mm. lastly, uh, what mm. do you make of uh, the accusation of the uh, Akin Oshotokun, the new campaign DG, <laughs> being a <laughs> member of the Zenit Labour Party <laughs> and being a campaign DG? I mean, is there anything wrong with that from your own perspective? Uh, well, morally and politically, I mean, it is very embarrassing. Probably legally, it's not a problem. What the law will certainly not allow is for you to run for election on the platform of two political parties. Mm. But the oh, director right. generalship you know it's not uh, <laughs> running for election exactly <laughs> but morally and politically the opponents have a very good point all right mamu mm. jaga must mm. thank you so much arise analyst for helping us understand these issues well that has been for this edition of arise prime time do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja goodbye and thank you for watching i'm summer samuel